Hey everybody, and welcome to, I think what might be the last one for now of the how to write APA results or how to write your results sections in APA style, seventh edition, according to where we're at right now. And I think this might be the last one because um, as far as the analysis that I do in my classes, this is what I want my students to know how to write these specific uh, analyses in words, using the proper notation style, everything around that. Now, if you have specific suggestions on analyses to write for future videos, please let me know in the comments down below because I will uh, include them in this playlist at some point in the future if you're really looking for that kind of if you're really looking for that kind of content you, you probably are looking for it and you're like ah he doesn't have that right now here's a suggestion i might look elsewhere you know and in that case i apologize i think this is where i'm going to leave it because i've got correlations i've got t-test i've got anovas i've got regression and i have now what we're going to do today which is chi-squared tests now that there's two of them we've got the goodness of fit and we've got the test of independence as you can see i've got them all right here ready to go alongside my trusty jamovi because i use jamovi in my courses so we are going to be using the data library sources for creating the data and the output that we need to actually do the uh, the, the, the write-up here for both of these. And we'll just scroll when we need to. Okay. So let's start with chi-square goodness of fit. So this is a one sample chi-square test where we have a sample of categorical data and we want to make sure that our model uh, fits the expectation. So our observed values fit a given expectation. So let's go ahead and open up the data uh, for goodness of fit. I think what I'm going to do is use the data library in the learning statistics for Jamovi folder. If I could find that, uh, we'll find that somewhere. Oh, there it is. Learning statistics with Jamovi. And we're going to find a chi-square um, data set. Here we go. Um, now we have randomness and Chapek 9. Chapek 9 is from Futurama. And the randomness is, I think, some cards. So we're going to open that one and we're going to run our goodness of fit on it. Um, although I think randomness also works for test of independence, but we're just going to go ahead and we're going to run goodness of fit on just choice one, for example, because it doesn't really matter. So this is what we're going to say. We've got we've got 200 subjects and they made two choices on cards. OK, and the expectation is that in a deck of 52 cards, the um, you have a one in four chance of getting a any single any single suit. Right. There are four suits. So one in four chance of getting that. And so they're out of 52 cards, 52 divided by four is is 13. There we go. 13. I should have known that because it goes from two to ace uh, or ace to king. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> there are 13 of these. OK. And so of these choices are do we expect to get to observe? Do we expect a one in four chance for all of these people to choose spades? Or, you know, are we going to expect out of these 250 spades, 50 hearts, 50 diamonds or 50 clubs? I don't know. Let's see. So let's go to frequencies and let's go to goodness of fit is n outcomes, chi square goodness of fit. Okay. And we are going to put in choice one here. Okay. And it's going to give us, um, and if we put in expected counts here, we should get 50, 50, 50, and 50. Okay. So that's the idea with choice one and choice two. And we can, we can do this with choice two as well. Uh, but that's what, where we want to start here. So let's go to our uh, paragraph here. All right. So let's, we're going to sort of reproduce what probably we've already said in the method section or in our hypothesis. So a um, chi square now, um, actually, you know what? I got to get Kai in here anyways. So let's get our, there we go, our emojis and stuff. And let's find Kai. Um, and let's get a good fancy Kai going here. Do we want, do we want this one? I think we want this one. Yeah, let's do that one. Bold, small Kai. Yeah, because it is actually a lowercase Kai that we're using. It looks like a capital X, but it's a lowercase Kai. So let's double click on that. And that should have put it in there. Yep. A Kai. Ooh. Oh, it's bold. That's why. Let's not make that bold. All right. So we're not going to use that one. <laughs> Let's use the skinny one. There we go. There we go. Chi, and then we do exponent two. Okay. And it changed everything to Cambria, which I don't want. So actually, let's Cambria math. And that's fine. I mean, we let's see if Times New Roman has a um, chi value for us here. Let's see what Times New Roman, since, since everything is written in Times New Roman. There we go. Nope, it doesn't. Nope, it doesn't want us. To, it doesn't want to allow us to do that. That's fine. That's that's fine. But we're going to change everything else after it. Times New Roman. So the two itself. I don't want it to be Cambrian math. Times New Roman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing so great, y'all. Uh, OK, you know what? Let's write the two first. Let's highlight it and let's change it here ourselves. There we go. We did it. Chi square. Chi square. Goodness of fit. Test was conducted on the student's card choices. The hypothesis was that we expect there, again, because the null hypothesis is that it is a good fit, but we don't want there will be observed suit selections, card suit, suit is kind of card suit selection. The hypothesis was that we expect there will be observed card suit selection that is different from what is expected in a sample of cards. Uh, specifically, the expectation uh, is that there will be 50 cards for each of the four suits. You can see here that I'm doing uh, APA numbering, right? Over 10, we've got five zero numerals, but 
under 10, F-O-U-R for four. Okay, so for each of the four suits in a sample of 200, uh, wow, okay, my inna always gets messed up. I need to add that to my typo correction. In a sample of 200 students. The test revealed, and if we take a look here, we've got a p-value of 0 0.038, 0 0.04. I'm going to put 0.038 because three decimal points is fine. Okay, so we can do that. Uh, the test revealed that the randomness, hence the <laughs> name of the module here, the randomness of a shuffled deck of cards does not uh, align with this equal expectation. And then we put the chi-square here, okay? Um, overall test, and I gotta make sure, make sure your exponent, when you highlight that kind of stuff, oops, nope, we gotta put the, this is where the rubber meets the road here because you have to um, put in the detailed explanation. So this is what it looks like just off the top here. So actually I'm going to drop that in here, right? So that's what it's supposed to look like, where the red is the number of values. I got this from social science, sociistatistics.com is where I got this from. So if you want to take a look at there are other ways to uh, report things. So we put our degrees of freedom in, although this is, says digress. So, you know, I'm going to make, uh, let's, let's go ahead and help this guy out here. There we go. All right. So we got to put our degrees of freedom in, which is three. And that is uh, how many uh, there are. So we've got clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. How many there are minus one. So that's three and then comma. And then we put N. We're going to hydalicize that here in just a second. And we're going to put how many we had. So that's 200, okay? Because that's how many people we had, okay? And then that equals a value, as you can see, okay? What the chi-squared statistic is, is 8.44. And then we're going to comma, and that's going to be P is equal to 0.038, period, okay? And then we're going to italicize P, and we're going to italicize N. Chi-squared does not, or chi does not get italicized because chi is a Greek letter. Greek letters do not get italicized in APA style, okay? So we can say the test revealed that the randomness of a shuffled deck of cards does not align with this equal expectation. And then here's the chi-square st statement, which says our hypothesis was supported. Um, and then we can say, furthermore, uh, students tended to select more often than expected the suit of hearts and much fewer than expected the suit. You could probably write this a little bit better the suit of clubs uh spades and diamonds were selected or yeah selected chosen i mean i know the variable is called chosen but it's fine spades and diamonds were selected um at the expected value there you go that's a goodness of fit right there okay there's some passive sentences in here i think you could rework this i mean i i'm just generating this off the top of my head none of this is uh, say what you will about video production here but just off the top of my head it sort of tells you where to put the pieces here in just doing this kind of thing OK, so just keep that in mind. And there you go. What so the elements here that you're doing is, OK, so you're telling the reader what test you're about to do. You're reminding them what the hypothesis is. OK, you are then explaining what the outcome of the overall test is, and you're expressing the test in APA style. And then you are expanding on what the um, what the outcome is. And then here we could more often than expected the student of hearts. And you could say, you know, n equals a little n equals 64, right? And which is right here. And then you could say much fewer than expected suit of clubs in parentheses, little n equals 35. I mean, there you, you can you can mess around with that if you want to, or you could put the proportions values in there rather than the count value. So, um, or you can maybe not, well, n would work, little n, make sure it's little n like this, okay? Oops, uh, n equals, but that's hearts, so that's 64. It's always gonna be a whole number too. And then we italicize little n here because it is a subsample. And then we could put clubs here and we could put n, or actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's highlight in here and then copy that. And then we put in 35. Bling. There we go. And that's how you do it. Okay. That's how you do it. Spades and diamonds were selected at expected value. Um, I don't know if I would put those in. I mean, spades 50, exactly 50 and 51 is essentially the same thing. Okay. So that is goodness of fit. Remember, goodness of fit is only one sample. Let's scroll down here. Now the chi square expression, APA notation style here is going to be the exact same for test of independence, but the way we write about it is going to be slightly different. So let's jump in that. Okay. So let's find out, uh, let's find um, a, our new data set here. The reason why I'm going to ch change the data set is because I like the Chapek 9 one. So let's open Chapek 9. It's going to open over here. Okay. Um, and uh, let's do left half window management there. Um, I just got into Raycast. It's so good. So good. All right. So here we have species and their choice, right? So a test of independence is comparing two categorical variables to one another and whether the observed counts of the overlap between those two are independent of one another, right? There's no overlap in expectation or if they are not independent, there's some relationship between the two. So that is what we are looking for here. So the null hypothesis is that they're independent. The alternative or our research hypothesis is that they are not independent. Okay. So make sure that that is the case here. So how we're going to start this out before I, I, I do this, a, and I'm going to grab this because I already did it. I don't want to look for that again. A chi square, but not goodness of fit. Chi square test of independence, independence, there we go, was conducted to determine if 
a robot or a human would make a different choice. I'm going to go here. We're going to use this robot or a Newman. Sorry, guys. My typing is terrible. Uh, we're going to make a different choice to hide their humanness on a robot, on a planet uh, inhabited, inhabited only by robots and who kill any humans they encounter. The choices were of a puppy, a flower, or data. I love it. I just I love this. It's so good. OK, so that that is what our hypothesis is. Right. So we're telling uh, what the reader what test we did and we're explaining to them the background. Right. So then we say and then so then we conduct it. We go up to frequencies. We go to test of association. I don't know why Jamovia has chosen test of association rather than test of independence, but that's all right. Whatever. Uh, test of association is the ap actual opposite of what we're looking for. So I, it, it makes sense. Again, independence is the null hypothesis. Association is the alternative hypothesis. So test of association, we're going to put species in rows. So it's going to be two for my rows and choice is going to go into columns and we're going to get that. Um, so let's, we got to drag this out just a bit. Um, I do want to get phi and Kramer's V so we can get Kramer's V out here. Okay. So here we have the contingency table, which is created for our chi square. Okay. Um, this is only observed. I'm not going to messy this up with the expected values, but here you go. And then here is the chi square test. Okay. It actually gives you the n, which you need, which is right, goes right here, right? And then we get um, Kramer's v. Uh, phi coefficient is only applicable if this is a two by two table. Kramer's v is if this is a greater than a two by two ta table, uh, contingency table. So the relationship between species and choice was significant. And then here we're going to go ahead and copy this um, and we're going to go to uh, df of two. Now, the df of uh, a contingency table is really annoying. It's the rows minus one times the columns minus one number of columns, number of rows minus one nine times the number of columns minus one. So just accept that it's two It's because it's two minus one is one. Three minus one is two. Two times one is two. And then N is 180, as we see here, 180 different uh, beings, which equals 10.70. I'm going to do seven zero as opposed to what they show here, 10.7. And then P equals 0 0.05, 0 0.005, excuse me. Right. So that is definitely significant to a criterion value of 0 0.05. Right. And then I'm going to do comma and then I'm going to do Kramer's. And you can do Kramer's V or phi. It depends on what you do here. We're going to do V just in case, because that's what we got here is 0 0.244. Okay, or you could do 0 0.24 comma or not comma period or full stop. And then I italicize V because V is a Latin letter. Now, if you did Kramer's phi, um, then you wouldn't italicize it. Okay. And you would also say phi coefficient and you would just say phi here um, if this was a two by two table. Okay. So. What does this tell us? Well, OK, so this is the outcome. That means they are not independent of another. They are related. So what is the relationship? Well, the relationship is let's take a look here. Uh, humans chose data far more often. Uh, but no, we won't do far more often than uh, robots to hide the fact that they were humans. Makes sense, right? Um, you can imagine that the humans who chose puppies and flowers were immediately murdered by the robots on Chappic. No, there you go. Robotos, the robot, the robot, the robotos. OK, maybe you wouldn't put that at the end of your result section, but it kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense. So I'm, I'm just saying I'm just saying. <laughs> so there you go. That's how you write result sections for chi-square tests of independence, right? So again, we tell them what test was conducted. We remind them of the hypothesis. The relationship was significant. We tell them, we give them all the information and the effect size is a small effect, right? It's a very small effect according to the conventions on Kramer's, okay? And humans, and then we explained what was different than what we expected. So humans chose data more often than any other, than any other, than robots, right? Than any of the other choices, right? And then robots decided to choose data at a smaller, at a, at a lower rate than, than humans did and flowers at a larger rate than humans did. You can go into more of that detail if you need to, if somebody is asking you to do that. But these by themselves, these two by themselves work just as good. OK, you've got the chi square, you've got a breakdown, you've got all the elements for a result section or for a paragraph within a result section where you are doing a chi square. All right. So that is how you do chi square goodness of fit and test of independence APA results sections or paragraphs. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or feedback, please leave those in the comments down below. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.